بهتر رفت Hello and welcome to Walk the Talk. I am Shekhar Gupta in the launch of Teen Murti Bhavan in Delhi and my guest today I should not waste any time introducing him Farid Zakaria. Welcome to Walk the Talk. Uh how you know I don't know this time in, in uh, introducing you but just to just to acknowledge the fact that you are by far the most prominent public intellectual intellectual of Indian origin if I may put it like that in the US but very American. Uh, as there is a saying in the in the Talmud, from your lips to God's ears, <laughs> <laughs> if you say so, Shekhar. Yeah. But times have changed a great deal since we talked last. Yeah. January 2004 is when we last talked. I remember that very well. At Haji Ali. At Haji Ali, yes, in Bombay. Yes, times have changed. I think that uh, that was probably the pinnacle of U.S. power. Uh, mm. If you think about the unipolar world as being from 1989 fall of the soviet union to about 2006 2007 uh 2003 2004 were the the great high point of american power where this one country could almost by itself unilaterally depose two regimes 6000 miles away from it expand its military budget by 60 billion dollars which is more than the combined military budgets of of britain and germany but that world is passing and i think I mean, and, 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 if, if, are we talking now at what could be the lowest point of american power in many decades you know i think that i would have agreed with you maybe 6 months ago but right. in a sense we are we are past the phase of critiquing the bush administration now i think what we're really into if, if you pardon the expression is understanding the post american world you know, i think everybody understands that that level of american hegemony and unip- uh, unilateralism has passed now we try to understand this far more complex world with america still at the center but in a room of equals and you saw that vividly with this g20 summit the actual uh, existence of this summit was itself an event to be marveled at every previous financial crisis shaker has been done with the g7 or the g8 or the imf in other words western clubs for the first time they did it with 12 emerging market countries and the dominant theme by everyone's account was that these new countries india china brazil will have to be given more power more representation because those are the ones who will provide the hormone of growth now isn't it if you look at the next 3 years global growth 100% of global growth will be provided by the emerging market nations western europe will will shrink united states will either stay flat or shrink japan will shrink china will grow who knows 6 to 8 8% india will grow 5 to 7% but that growth will be the only substantial growth in the global economy and then if you think about cash in a credit starved uh, world system who has cash the chinese the japanese the saudis N- not the americans not the europeans so if you need money you have to go to the emerging markets if you need growth you have to go to the emerging markets and if you need legitimacy increasingly you need to go to the emerging and maybe markets. if you need jobs you have to go to emerging markets it 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 may well start happening i mean because that they will be the engines of growth yeah you know farid uh, a book on post american world you know you read the book what have you been called a declinist many people have called me a declinist and uh, particularly by kind of neo conservatives right but i think that the the basic idea i was trying to point out is a tectonic shift in the global uh, structure of power America as you know you've read the book shaker it it's it does pretty well and i do believe i'm an optimist about america's place it, yes it won't dominate quite the way it has for the last 20 years but that was totally unnatural no country has ever dominated the international system like that it will be the leading power but in a world of equals and in a world of increasingly assertive equals you know i ask you that question because uh, while you you call it the post american world yet you see millions of people around the world shedding tears when they saw obama on his giving his victory speech the american virus infects the whole world's financial and economic system isn't it um global economy will not improve unless american economy recovers so it's not exactly a post american world look I, as i keep saying america remains the central power 